All right. Assalamu everybody. Can you guys hear me? Fine? Yeah? All right, good. Um, clearly, it's really busy in here, so. <laughs> uh, you know, oh, my name is Bilal. This is Nazima. Uh, I'm a fitness expert slash personal trainer, strength coach. So she's a registered dietitian. Much easier to name what she is than what I am. There's no uh, designation for what I actually am, uh, what there is, obviously, for what she does. Um, uh, you know, it, it was interesting. We're on our way here, I was thinking. And as soon as we pulled in, she got really excited thinking about her university days and I had like PTSD thinking about my university days. <laughs> it's what makes our marriage work is the fact that we're very different in that sense. Uh, but yeah, it was, um, she was like, oh, because Michelle, she want, plans to do her PhD one day, right? And it's just like thinking about, and I'm like, for me, I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm like, I'll drop the kids off to school and I'm going to come back to my most, right? But it was interesting just thinking about coming back here um, and having the opportunity. The one thing I was thinking about a lot, especially, you know, besides obviously the joking aspect of it, you know, the opportunity that lies in front of you, all of you, right? And and how much there is still for you all to discover and to for the opportunities that are in front of you, right? Because um, we had a lot of opportunities, but what's in front of you guys is, is very, very different. Um, in different challenges, uh, different outlooks, just a different environment as a whole. It's a whole different beast. But within that, and I keep using this word opportunity, but truly when I mean that, there is so much in front of all of you. And alhamdulillah, you're very, very blessed. And, you know, when we think about living in the West, we are very privileged, right? Um, but it's not to look down at that privilege and instead to take advantage of it, right? Because those who aren't in favor of us are definitely taking advantage of that privilege. So we have to make sure that we do the same thing, right? Does that make sense, right? So that's where health and fitness, you know, when it comes to health and fitness, there's a lot of myths and uh, misconceptions, right? There's a very superficial aspect to it, right? And the one thing that we're always telling all of our clients who work with us and every time we do a talk, that it's not the superficial aspect. That's unfortunately the one that gets exploited the most, right? Because when you look at like bodybuilding and you think about uh, Instagram and TikTok and everything else that's out there, what's the one thing everybody always shows every single time when it comes to understanding health and fitness and nutrition, they're always just showing their body, but they're not actually talking about what's, the purpose and why we do what we do, right? Like for a Muslim, this is almost mandatory, right? To take care of your health, right? Our body is a gift. And one day we have to return that gift. So we have to ask ourselves in what shape, not literally, but in what shape will that gift be returned, right? So for us, it's always, there's a deeper purpose to why we want to work out and take care of our bodies, why we want to eat healthier, why we have to say no. There's times when you have to fight your nuts to say no to things, right? You have to fight your desires to say no when you want to say yes, right? When something is halal and it's in front of you, you can eat it, technically, and it's not a sin, but you're still saying no. That in itself is a much deeper spiritual battle that a lot of times people overlook because they think about, oh, I got to eat a salad or I got to do this. And so the biggest thing is always understanding that it's not just about having to eat a salad or just having to get a workout in. It's much deeper than that. Right. And so inshallah, that's one thing that we want to be able to try to cover as much as possible and help you guys. So I'm going to do the fitness. Uh, she's going to start off with nutrition. I'm going to do the fitness and then we'll do Q&A and we'll open discussion and so forth. So whatever you guys have. And don't ever be shy to ask questions. It's another thing um, because you never know that someone else might be being shy um, and they're not asking the question. And then you didn't ask that question. And it was something that maybe many people didn't think about and they would have thought about. Do you guys understand the route that I'm going down? <laughs> <laughs> so ask as many questions as you can. There's never a bad question. Um, trust me, I've been to high schools that give talks. Those are some of those questions that I get there. Trust me, none of, nothing you guys can ask now <laughs> will, ever, will ever beat that, those questions. So yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> She's saying, should we share what, what we do? So um, obviously, registered dietitian, personal trainer, we have an online um, health and wellness company. What we do is we have members all over the world, um, you know, uh, and we help them, you know, lose weight, get stronger, some put on weight, uh, but overall build a healthier lifestyle, right? Uh, the company is called the Healthy Muslims. All our clients are Muslims um, and they range from, you know, different ages and so forth. Generally it's families and stuff that we are generally working with, uh, but the age range still varies drastically. Our biggest thing is always trying to provide, you know, the science doesn't change. Right? when it comes to nutrition and fitness and so forth, the one thing that changes is the culture. Right? That's what makes us stand out. Right? Because being in a community in an environment where obviously not going to be drinking, there's no Christmas, there's no Halloween, all these things matter. So when we're having these discussions with our, client, with our clients, being able to relate to them at a much higher and deeper level makes a huge difference on them being able to stay on track. Generally, the Muslim community obviously is very diverse and very vast. 
but generally we're very, very family oriented, right? So for example, once you're married and so forth, the one thing is on the weekend, you're either going to your in-laws or you're going to your parents or something or another. How do you tackle that, right? It's much easier to be like, oh, you should do is just tell your mom that's not what you're going to eat today. <laughs> that's not going to work, right? Heck, it doesn't even work for me. I'm going to go back to my parents' house. Yeah, my mom's going to be like, are you crazy? I'm going to get a smack if I say no to a mom. I'm 35 with three kids, and I'll still get a smack from my mom if I say no to eating her food, right? So, but we understand that. Now, getting someone else outside of our culture to understand that is very different, right? So that's one thing with us. The science is going to be really important, and we want to be able to uh, dispel a lot of the myths that exist uh, within and around it. And on top of that, understanding how to be able to then balance it within our cultures that are within the Muslim culture as a whole as well. I miss anything? I usually do. But yeah, you're going to have to come back. Just click here. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Is this even working? I don't know. Okay. Um, so I come everyone. So I'm Nazima. I'm the nutrition side of things. Uh, so yeah, so I, I received the questions, which were really great. So I integrated a lot of that. Uh, and then even after I go through everything, if you guys have questions, jot it down and then we'll do like a Q&A afterwards as well. But first, what I want to start off with is what is the first word that comes to you in your mind when you think of healthy eating? So just shout it out. Healthy eating, whatever. Vegetables. Sorry. Greek yogurt, okay. Balanced, okay. Any, no processed foods, fruits. Okay, anything else here? What comes to your mind? Healthy eating. If you hear it, like what's the first word that comes to your mind? Protein shake, there was some, what was <laughs> Chicken rice, okay, yeah. Okay, so very like diet type. Okay, all right, cool. Press, press the um, button. It's interesting, I always like to know, like ask that because it's, I hear like different answers based on where I'm at, so. Um, I think the biggest thing, and Bilal did mention that, was well, this is like a really awkward, okay, I'll look there. Um, the, thanks, okay. Um, the biggest thing is that, you know, thinking about healthy eating from a more meaningful way, right? Because I feel like a lot of times we have a lot of connotations when it comes to healthy eating, and it's very like, it's a diet, it's not going to work for us, and I'm sure many of you are, you know, living at home, or like your parents are the main cook, even if you're not living at home, you know? Um, and so you're kind of like, okay, that's something that feels like a lot of effort, and it feels very foreign to us. So it's something that you're like, I just can't even think about doing because that's not how we eat as a family. Um, so I think it's very important to, number one is going back to your intention on why you wanna eat healthier, right? And that's not to say that you can't have, you know, superficial goals in terms of weight loss and things like that, but those goals are not gonna take you in a way that's gonna allow you to eat healthy consistently. Cause I see it time and time again, where people are like, I wanna lose weight. You do it for a couple of weeks and then you let go. Cause that why isn't strong enough. And that's the reality. It's like, for us, yes, okay, we want to lose weight, but generally we're all covered more, right? So that weight loss isn't as big of a thing as, say, other communities. Um, so making it a more meaningful why. And for all of you, you are all students. And so going back to, okay, you guys are studying, you want to have more energy, you want to have more focus, you want to feel better. You don't want to just be like, you know, just very, very low energy and just getting day to day. And so if you kind of adjust what your intention, you can go even more specific, that will make healthy eating a lot more meaningful. Um, another piece is your relationship with food, right? Once again, we have a lot of how we grew up with our food. We have a lot of, you know, certain habits, um, certain ways we think about our food. Uh, and so shifting that so that it's not either, I either eat 100% healthy or forget it, right? It's like an all or nothing mindset because that's actually very damaging. It's learning how to shift into a lifestyle so you are able to still eat your cultural foods and still be able to eat healthier. And that will make a big difference versus, okay, I'm either, you know, just going to eat boiled broccoli and, and chicken breast or, oh shoot, now my mom made food. Now I, you know, screw the diet, right? It's like this constant cycling. So we need to shift away from that. Um, and then once of keeping the culture, right? So our food, whether it's Middle Eastern, South Asian, that's not the problem. A lot of times it's, you know, it's the portion size, it's certain components of it, how it's cooked and stuff. But generally, the culture in itself is not the issue, right? We demonize our own foods a lot, and we don't need to do that. If you actually look at the trends right now and what's, like, healthy, it's, like, lentil soup. I'm like, that's dal, you know, and also in the Middle Eastern cultures, that's, like, lentil soup that we have all grown up on. But now it's, like, become really trendy or, like, turmeric lattes. I'm like, come on. Like, this is, this is stuff that we have all, yeah, chai tea, like, all of these things. 
they it's literally taking from the ethnic cuisine and making it trendy. So our culture in itself is not the problem, but sometimes it's the portion size. It's how we eat, right? Um, the other piece, there's a huge confusion because unfortunately, a lot of Middle Eastern South Asian cultures, just because of our culture, our ethnicity and our genetics, we are at higher risk of developing type two diabetes, cholesterol, heart disease. And so a lot of times we confuse that oh, with, oh, it's because of our food. Right, so no, it's, there's a, there's two different pieces. One is just genetically. Um, so if you have a family history, you have parents, higher risk, and just by being that ethnicity, you have a higher risk. Now, with that being said, if you are not making the healthiest choices, that's another added piece. But South Asians and Middle Eastern people, they're not getting those more often because of what they're eating. It's because just because of our ethnicity. So we got to do a little bit more work um, in order to be healthier. But that's a very important thing because I, I see it a lot where it's like, oh, it's because of our food. But it's like, no, even if you eat healthy, it's like you're still at a higher risk. And yeah, you can go to the next piece. So going back to why it's important to eat healthy as a student. Um, so thinking about when you eat a meal, what happens? Okay. After you eat a meal, you should not feel like you need to go take a nap. If you are feeling like this, and people feel like this for many, many years, and they just think it's normal, but after you eat a meal, you should feel energized and ready to go. So if that is, a, like, if that's happening to you right now, that's probably happening to many, many people, and that happens to people whether you're in your 20s or even in your 30s, right? A lot of our members that we work with that are older, they've spent all their lives feeling tired, feeling like you need to take a nap. And so what is happening in our body, right? So I think this is important. So when you eat a meal, um, what happens is there's, you know, carbohydrates, there's all sorts of nutrients, and we can go into to that in detail. But basically into your bloodstream, it breaks down. Carbs is one of them. So it breaks down into sugars. And it doesn't have to be something sweet. It can be anything you're eating. And so if you're not eating a balanced way, and it's, say, very simple carbs, your blood sugar is going to spike, and then it comes crashing down really quickly. And so that's where that low energy is. And so that's where people are like, let me just grab a quick coffee to get me through the day, to the, get, get me through the next class. Or, you know, grab a quick, like, something sugary, and it gives you, like, a bit of a pick-me-up. So we need to stop having that, basically, that spike and crash. Because that's where you're, you're kind of constantly just chasing that next little bit of energy. So instead, what you want to do is when you eat a meal, you want the energy, the, the blood sugar to slowly increase. So it's still going to increase, but it's not going to do this. It's going to kind of be like, what is those, bell curve? Is that what you call it? Yeah, so it goes up slowly. And then it will come down, but at a more kind of a, a better pace. And this is your next meal. That's like three to four hours later. So that's your next meal or snack. So that's how you should feel. So it's another piece is hunger. We shouldn't be scared of hunger. A lot of times people are like, if I'm on a diet, I have to be hungry all the time. That's not necessarily the case. But basically, after you eat a meal, you should feel energized. You're like, okay, I feel pretty good. Um, and you should not feel sleepy. Okay, so you should be good. And you shouldn't feel like overly full as well. That's another piece. Um, I'm sure everyone has heard the hadith, right? When we eat one third food, one third water, one third air. I get this question a lot, which is like, how do you know what that is? One third, right? Um, so going back now to the scientific piece, when you eat a meal, it takes 20 minutes for your body to register. So basically send signals back to your brain that you're getting full. So if you eat really quickly, like sometimes you're like, you know, maybe you're scrolling, you're just like eating quickly, you don't even realize. So maybe you've eaten in 10 minutes. Um, sometimes you don't even feel full at that time, but have you ever like afterwards, you're like, oh my God, I can't like move. It's, it's far time. Usually that happens in Ramadan, right? Where you're like, oh my God, what did I do? Um, and so that's why you've eaten a lot faster than what your body can keep up, right? So similarly, we need to slow down our eating, take about 20 minutes, put away the, the devices, slow down your eating so that you're in more in tune with your body. And right after when you're finishing, you're not necessarily eating to your fullness. Like you shouldn't be feeling physically full at that point. If you're still feeling a little bit hungry, that's okay. Give it 15, 20 minutes, and then you yourself will be like, okay, I feel pretty good. So that's kind of the difference, and that will be more in line with following the sun of not overeating. Okay, so you can go to the, and then so the big piece is like eating healthy when you're when you're busier, right? So the big piece is system. Systems in place as really kind of simplifying how you can eat healthy, right? That's and especially with all you guys have very busy schedules. So figuring out what are simple things. Um, if you have parents that are making food for you, that's amazing. Do not give that up, right? As long as you have that, it's more so just getting the right portion sizes, right? So if your parents are making you whatever, rice, chicken, right? Don't be like, I'm not eating your food anymore. I'm going to start eating healthy. No, make use of that. But it's just about 
how you pack your food and how you make your portions, right? So make use of that. And there may be a few extra things that you need to kind of supplement, right? A lot of times it's like you're rushing out the door and you're not eating breakfast, right? The first thing you're grabbing is like a Tim Hortons coffee. So you're old enough to take responsibility for at least breakfast, right? But if you're getting dinner, that's, you know, make use of that. Um, so plan out your meals, right? Have a set kind of, so if you know dinners are taken care of by your parents, what's happening for breakfast and lunch? Because like Tim, grabbing Tim Hortons and like that, that's not acceptable. Like take some time out. Um, I remember when I was in university, I, that's when I had started doing grocery. So I would just do like, and I, I got my like big girl job. So I was like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go do grocery. And it would be for actually mostly it would be lunches because breakfast foods would generally be at home, but I would still have a plan in place where I'm like, okay, at least lunches, I know I have to prep. And then dinners when I come home, um, I'll have at, with my parents. And then um, meal prep days, that's super important as well. So if you want to start taking control of your health, um, I think another thing as well, like sometimes when you're living with your parents, you still feel like a kid. Um, you guys are all old enough to start taking a little bit more initiative, right? So if you want to make changes to how you're eating, if you are done with feeling so low energy and not that great, take some time out, right? And so decide, like maybe it's Sundays, you prep your lunches for the week and you have, you know, lunches and snacks prepped. Um, you can take that responsibility. And then other things are thinking about, like I mentioned, what you have already available at your home um, and how to portion that out. So I'll talk about like kind of macros in a sec. Um, and then the other piece is like, if you guys, like what you guys are easily accessing consistently, generally those are not the healthy options, right? Um, like Tim Hortons is like grabbing a baked good and you're like, okay, this is a common one I, I see a lot. Like I'm going to be healthy instead of the donut, I'm going to grab the muffin. Do you guys know the muffin actually has more sugar, more calories than the actual donut? That's like, it's crazy. But uh, every time I say this, people are like, so is the, are you telling me to just grab the donut instead? I'm not saying that. Um, actually, I think the Tim Hortons, they now have the egg bites, like the veggie egg bites. Those are like a better, a better option. Um, but yeah, but if you guys are grabbing food from my outside, schedule it out. So if you're, for instance, if you're eating something out every single day, um, make a goal where you're like, okay, I'm going to cut down maybe just once a week. I'm going to eat out with friends, right? Or, or grab something. Okay, cool. All right, go next one. Next one. Okay. All right, okay, so now we're gonna break down um, the meals. So a big mistake people make is you just, as soon as you think about healthy eating, you think about calories. You're like, I'm gonna, like, I need to eat a certain amount of calories. Honestly, you don't actually need to worry about calories. Instead, these are the three things. So your protein, your carbs, and veggies. These are very, very important. And so if you learn to think about your meals in this way, it's like, it's life-changing. Like that's essentially what we teach our clients and it takes some months to figure this out and be able to consistently apply it. Um, so protein, do, do you guys know what, what's protein? Give me examples of protein. Chicken, milk, yeah. What else, protein? Eggs, beef, what else? Fish, any, what about like uh, non-animal sources like plant-based, tofu, chickpeas, soy, yeah. All right, awesome. Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, those are really good ones um, as well. Okay, and then carbs. What are carbs? Give me examples of carbs. Bread, rice. What else? Pasta, yeah. Oatmeal. Yes. And then and when you think about carbs, a lot of times we're like, I'm going to cut out carbs, right, to be healthy. It's about two, two things, two cues to remember, quantity and quality, okay? So first is quality is you want to go for more whole grain carbs. So things like, say, go for more oats, um, whole grain breads. Um, try and avoid the, the white, white stuff, okay, like white bread. Um, with one exception, actually, when it comes to white rice and brown rice, the white rice is actually not as unhealthy as we think. So then that's where the second cue comes into place is quantity, okay? So generally, the way a lot of us eat is big plate of rice. It's like the foundation of the food. And then we have a little bit of curry or meat, right? So that rice, that is the issue, is the quantity there. It's not that it's rice in itself. So limiting it to a cup. Um, so one thing, actually, we still do this. Instead of serving with a serving spoon at home, we just use a measuring cup, like one cup, and we'll just scoop. So like a cup of rice. Um, so like I said, going back to, okay, you guys, parents are making food for you. Instead of loading up your plate with a, a full plate of rice, that's going to make you feel like you need to take a nap after one cup of rice. Then people say, I'm going to feel hungry. So you need to increase your protein instead. So what you have there is the chicken, the fish, um, whatever those sources are, more protein. 
And then the other component is the veggies. So half a plate of veggies. Okay, so veggies is one thing that's missing in a lot of households. So that's something that you can kind of take ownership of, right? If you see your parents are not making vegetables, maybe be the one that makes the veggies. Grab frozen veggies and saute them. So then at least, you know, okay, the rice is there, the meat is there. I just need to make sure that I take responsibility of the veggies. Um, so that way your, your plate in itself gets adjusted. You're not necessarily changing your foods that you're eating at home, but you're just changing the portion sizes, okay? Um, do you guys know what the difference between macronutrients and micronutrients are? Do you guys, yeah? Yeah, okay, so macronutrients, do you guys know? So there's macro is big, micro is small, right? Macro, you can see, basically. Think of it that way. You could be able to, you should be able to, every time you eat, you should be able to point it out. Um, so what are the three, there's only three macronutrients. What are the three macronutrients? Yes, protein, fats, and carbs, okay? Fat, a lot of our foods generally already has the fat, so we don't, like, it's cooking in oil, right? So we don't generally need to add fat back onto our plate, so that's why you won't be able to see it. Um, so those are the three macronutrients that you need to think about. Protein and carbs is, is the real common one. So instead, you want to start thinking in macronutrients rather than calories when you're trying to eat healthier. Now, micronutrients, those are all the vitamins, right? So iron, calcium, magnesium, like the whole periodic table, basically, right? These are ones that you don't see, but you will get most of them from your fruits and vegetables. So that's why half a plate veggies, you're going to get micronutrients from there. There's very little carbs in there. There's very, there's like almost no protein in the vegetables, but you're eating them for the micronutrients. Okay. So, so that's kind of a, a good way to think about it. Uh, next. And so here's, I just wanted to show some examples. Like when we think about protein, carbs, and veggies, like it doesn't have to be like a very bland thing, right? Like it could be like curry, um, for instance, so you can have your pita or not, right? It's just making sure you plug it in. Like, okay, my carbs is going to be the pita. Um, my protein is going to be the chicken. And then, oh shoot, there's no veggies. So let me just make a salad, right? So start thinking of it in that way. Now, one thing with veg vegetarian sources of protein, they're all linked to carbs. They will always have carbs with them. Whereas animal sources of protein, it's mostly all protein, right? Um, red meats and things will have a little bit of fat, but mostly protein. Now, anytime you think about vegetarian source, sources, so like chickpeas, lentil soup, black beans, um, those all have carbs. They actually have the same amount of carbs as, so like say one cup of rice is the same as one cup of chickpeas. The carbs are very similar. But the difference here is there's a lot more fiber. Uh, so the mistake people make is, oh yeah, I'm eating protein. So they'll have like chickpeas and then they'll have rice with it. So you're doubling up on the carbs. So anytime you're doing vegetarian sources of protein, you have to actually be a little bit more strategic because essentially you're eating, you need to increase the protein, but then the carbs are increasing with it. So you got to eat more vegetables. So you wouldn't double up with the carbs. Does that make sense? That confusing. <laughs> but yeah, see how it gets like a little bit confusing. The only vegetarian source is like tofu that doesn't have carbs. So that one you can do. Um, and then things like Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, those are, those are pretty good. The carbs are pretty low there. Okay. Other key things. Um, yeah, so how many meals and snacks in a day do you need? A lot of times people are like, how many do I, should I be eating? So here's the thing. Breakfast, some people are breakfast eaters, some people are not. How do you know if you should eat breakfast? If you wake up and you're like, you're good, energy is good, and you don't need breakfast, that's okay. But if you are going and grabbing a sugary coffee and saying, oh, I don't need breakfast, no, then you should probably eat something. You're better off eating something rather than spiking your blood sugar. Um but if you're going to eat something sugary for breakfast, like a bowl of cereal, even though it's, it's like plain cornflakes or something, that's going to spike your blood sugar as well. It's not good. Um, so go for something like eggs, Greek yogurt. You want to go more protein with a little bit of carbs um, with it. So it could be, you could be at like two to three meals. But you want to kind of see when you're, those, those energy lows are happening. That will help you kind of determine when those meals are happening. Um, for you guys that have busy schedules with your classes, like pack snacks and meals, right? When you're having a full day at campus, make sure you're, you're prepped for that. Otherwise you end up grabbing things that are not the best for you. Um, and then water intake. Okay, this is a huge one. Everyone can do this is drinking enough water, right? Um, this is a huge key where it's like, it just gets missed, especially in the winter months is being able to drink enough water. Um, question or how much water? So you shouldn't feel thirsty throughout the day. That's a good indicator. Um, average is two liters. This is like a like blanket average, at least two liters, but it could vary. So if you are more active, 
um, you would drink more, but at least two liters you should be drinking. Um, and sugary drinks, like you should basically be at zero. Those are those should be occasionally um, because they essentially just spike your blood sugar. So those are re real treats. I I personally, I'm like, if I want to like consume my calories, I'd rather like eat a treat than drink a treat, right? Um, and that includes a lot of the sugary, like ca caffeine beverages, bubble teas. They have a lot, a lot of sugar. Um, one can of pop. Do you guys know how many teaspoons of sugar is in one can? Any idea? Guesses? So there's eight teaspoons of sugar in one can of pop. Um, and then like a bubble tea will have anywhere from 12 to 20 teaspoons of sugar. So yeah, but when you drink it, you don't even realize. Um, so you can see how quickly it adds up. And then sometimes like those big Arizona iced teas, those are, I think those are close to 20 teaspoons of sugar. Um, so it's a lot, <laughs> so it really adds up. And then oh yeah, vitamin D. So this is something everyone, when it comes to supplements, everyone's low in vitamin D, especially if you cover more. Um, we live in Canada, we don't get enough sun uh, and we're not out in the sun. If our skin is a little darker, it also doesn't, um, the, even if you get sun, it doesn't convert into vitamin D as easily. So everyone should be taking vitamin D supplements that also affects your mood, your energy significantly. Um, so, so that's something across the board. We should all be taking vitamin D supplements. I think I'm done. Oh yeah, that's you. Okay. The fun part. <laughs> all right. So. Uh, when it comes to importance of fitness, you know, one of the things that's often talked about is how much, what to do, how to be able to go about it. You know, the biggest thing is increasing your level of physical activity, right? But the, when it comes down to understanding the importance of it, um, it's going to have, you know, and I'm going to cover a lot of this, right? But, you know, from mental health, and this is something we were talking about actually here, you know, you think about your physical, your mental, your spiritual, uh, emotional everything it plays a huge factor in all of them right and the same thing goes with nutrition as well right being able to say yes or no when certain things are presented to you and you really want to be able to eat it like for example she knows if you bring home a cheesecake i'm going to devour the whole thing i've legitimately had my kids going to sleep and they're like dad please don't finish it i'm like okay i'll try my daughters i'll say yes to my son i'll say no to. um but that plays a huge factor. like that being able to say uh no when you want to say yes that's huge the same thing fitness is no different you know especially when you have for example for all of you you have your classes you know you're mentally exhausted even though physically you haven't really done much when it comes to sitting you're walking from class to class but you're not really exhausted physically but mentally you're drained right and you just like want to just close your eyes or take a nap or you just you know you just want to shut off and it's hard sometimes to be able to get up and go, right? But then always coming back to your intention and understanding the importance of it, that always plays a huge factor, right? Um, so when it comes to benefit, so like I was talking about, you know, um, this is really important, strength, right? So when, I, when someone says strength or strong, what does that mean to anybody? What does that mean to you? Sorry? Yeah, that's good. What else? Muscle mass? Mentally, yeah. They're all good points. So the one thing you always want to think about when you think about strength is you think about your goal, what you're trying to accomplish, and can you meet, meet that demand, right? So for example, if I want to lift this chair, do I have the demand needed to be able to lift this chair and move it from one place to the other, right? So for example, if you think about um, who here knows what a power lifter is or power lifting. Okay, so there's three lifts in there. Squat, deadlift, bench press. They need to be able to lift super, super heavy, right? So I'm talking about like five to six to 800 pounds, like heavy, heavy weight, right? Now, does it matter for them if they can run really fast? No, because it's not relevant, relative, relevant sorry, to their sport, right? It doesn't matter how high they can jump. No, because it's not relevant to their sport, right? Those are also strength exercises. They're also important for your muscles to be able to take on that demand, right? In order for you to long, run long periods of time, your body has to have the ability to be able to do so. Oftentimes when people start playing sports, they get hurt. Why do they get hurt? Because they, their body can't take on that demand. They've been sitting all day. They haven't done much physical activity, right? What's well, so the one thing we always see people often do is they're like, oh, I need to get in shape. I'm going to play a sport. That's probably one of the worst things sometimes we can do because we haven't actually built uh, the demand that our body can take on that exercise, right? So regard, so if you look at a bodybuilder, for example, not a big fan of it just because there's a huge, uh, you know, 
uh, super, significantly superficial aspect to it. Um, but for them, it doesn't matter how much they lift. It doesn't matter uh, how many reps they can do. It doesn't matter how run, how, how much you run, their strength. None of that stuff matters. It's literally just how they look in the mirror. That's the only thing that matters, right? So it's relative to what the goals are, right? So if you think about like a hockey player, if you think about a football player, or a basketball player, for a football player, certain positions, it doesn't really matter how high they can jump. Right. You're not you, you might check it, but it's not the biggest indicator of how good they are. Right. You think about a hockey player. It does not matter. A soccer player, a hockey player, it does not matter how high you can jump. But a basketball player, it doesn't matter how high you can jump. Yeah. That's an important skill to have. Right. It's why generally the tallest guys get drafted much easier than someone who's smaller, even if they have less skill, because you have to be able to meet the demand. So when it comes to strength, it's always important. It's not always about how heavy you can lift. Understand your goals first and foremost, and then meet the demand of what you want. So if you want to be a marathon uh, runner, or if you want to you know, learn how to sprint, if you want to learn how to lift, whatever it is, just make sure you can meet the demand that you're going to put on your body. Um, mobility, so much mobility, that's one thing that's really, really underrated, and a lot of times people have a hard time, um, I guess, you know, there's flexibility and then there's mobility, right? Um, that has a huge part in understanding. So mobility, improving your range of motion, right, but then being able to be strong in it. That is really, really important. So it's not just about flexibility because being flexible in itself is useless if you can't be strong. Does that make sense? Right? So for example, if I have the ability to sprint, but the moment I sprint, right? So sprint requires you to be on a full extension, right? Your hamstring has to go into a full extension and then has to be able to power into the ground for you to take off again. If I can just stretch into that position, awesome. But the moment I take off, I get hurt. That means I don't have the demand. That makes sense? Right? Um, endurance. Uh, you know, weight loss, you know, weight loss is something that's, you know, I don't understand how it's become controversial, uh, but it's very simple, right? Um, there's a difference between um, having uh, washboard abs, which are not necessary at all. And then there's a difference between being absolutely obese, right? There is a middle ground that's really, really important for us to understand. Right. Uh, when you think about the health ramifications that come with being overweight and then but at the same time, the health, the mental health ramifications that come from uh, being obsessive about losing so much weight. Right. Both sides are an extreme and it's important. And that's one thing you, know, you think about everything you learn about fitness and nutrition. It comes back to our dean every single time. Right. What do we always do? We don't follow extremes. We follow the middle path every single time. Right. And that's something that's really, really always important to understand when it comes to fitness and nutrition. It is directly, you know, you're having to fight yourself to get up and go work out. It's no different in Salah. There's time the fudger time kicks in. You're just like, you're delaying, you're delaying, you're delaying, you're delaying. And they're like, oh, you run, do a do a clear. There's times when that happens. Your workouts will be no different. There's times you'll sit outside a gym in your car or waiting. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go in, I'm going to go in, I'm going. Right? You have these battles, and that's perfectly fine. But that's one thing I always kind of go back to is that, you know, it's going to be directly correlated. But getting through that. Um, Improve, you know, density. This is something that's really important, uh, you know, especially longevity. Uh, most of you are younger here, right? Unfortunately, you guys don't think about the future as much as uh, it would be nice. If that's one thing I can go back, that's definitely something I would have done a little bit more, think about the future a little bit more. Uh, but it's good to live in the present too. But bone density is something that's really important is, and joint health, right? Um, the reason why she's laughing is because she's seen me go through my numerous amount of injuries, right? Uh, it's a perfect example of do as I say, not do as I do. Uh, when I see a weight and I want to lift it, I will do my best too. Um, it's just the competitiveness in me. And I play a lot of sports. I play a lot of hockey. Uh, so for me, and when I play hockey, I'm more of the physical type. So for me, it's always, um, you know, being able to work out, having bone density and joint health is really, really important. So my workouts have to, uh, have to be there. Otherwise, I'm going to be injured a lot more than I would like. Right? Um, energy improves mood. Uh, positive impact on mental health, memory focus. This is interesting. So I went to York University. Um, for psychology. And it's funny, when I was done university, I thought I would never have to do anything with psychology again because fitness is what I want to do. And little did I realize I do more psychology now than I do fitness because all of our clients, that's the one thing is understanding it's habits, right? Which is psychology, right? It's understanding, you know, the ups and downs, understanding how to be able to get back on track. Mental health across the board you look at almost every single research, not almost every single research that comes out has a significant impact on your mental health from stress, anxiety, depression, et cetera, et cetera. You go up and down the list, your workouts and being physically active has a huge impact, right? When you think about um, society and think about all the stuff that's going on, there's two major factors for why 
um, we're seeing health deteriorate at such a fast pace, more than we probably ever have. And for all the for all the known, um, you know, the most uh, popular diseases and so forth, there's two main reasons: lack of physical activity and overeating. Right? Those two things are the major factors for the vast majority of diseases, whether it comes physical or mental. Right? We're sitting down too much and for too long throughout the day, and we're eating way too much. We're surpassing what we actually need. Right? So that, those are one things that are always important to remember is anytime you're going through a tough time, always ask yourself, what are you doing to take care of yourself? Right? Because in order for you to take care of others, for you to be present and so forth, you also have to have a level of taking care of yourself as well. So that's always something that's really important to remember. And especially when you're going through university, it's tough because you know, you're thinking about you know, what you're going to be doing after, you're thinking about what's happening now, you're thinking about your grades, you're thinking about everything else in society, and then you put an open the phone and you see what's happening on the other side of the world. Right? That is daunting. Right? And I don't know if anyone's your parent, right? Um, you know, I think about how much life has changed from when we were in university to what you guys are, and then thinking about when our kids are going to be in university. Right? It's, it's, it's scary to think about. Right? It's angering to think about. Right? It's partially why I work out as much as I do. Because right? you need to put that into something. Right? So for me, my, the thing is, like, you know, The Rock, I don't know if you, I guess everybody here knows what The Rock is, but he uses this one thing I always really like. He says it's an anchor. And I'm like, for me, that's true. She knows when I don't work out as much, she literally tells me to go to the gym, right? Because it's important, um, especially for, you know, for guys. Being inside of a gym, being inside of that environment, obviously finding a halal version of that <laughs> is important, um, you know, but it's, it's important. It plays a huge factor in development. It plays a huge factor in mental health, everything as a whole, right? Uh, all right, so how often do you need to work out? So how often do you need to work out? I'm going to ask all of you here. How often do you think you need to work out? In a week, in a week, three times, three times, four times, more than you are right now. Depends. Not, I don't think I should work out more than I am. Four times. Okay. All right. So minimum you should be doing is three. All right. How long should your workout be? Two hours. So per workout or total. So all three. I mean, like at one singular workout should be how long? Two hours? Okay, so that's six hours in a week? Okay. 30 minutes? Okay. One hour? Anybody else? 15, 20 minutes? Oh, wow. Oh, that's pretty good. I wish I could do that. <laughs> Actually, I don't, but uh, um, no. So an average workout should be anywhere from 45 to an hour. After about the 50-minute mark, right, unless your nutrition is super dialed in, it can potentially, depending on what you're doing, start to not, you can see some level of atrophy. It's meaning your muscles start to get kind of eaten, right? Not literally, obviously. Um, but it depends on your nutrition, right? It depends on your protein intake, depends on everything else. Generally, that's a good mark, but it's also your body starts to fatigue a lot more, right? Also, the amount of times should be at the bare minimum three times, right? So three times a week, 45 to an hour, you know, that's less than three hours in 168 hours in a week, right? Now, that doesn't mean you, you want to do four times, you can do five times. The average for me is usually around five times. There's times in the week where I'll go four. So sometimes I'll go three, sometimes I've done two. It is what it is, but the one thing is to try to at least get those three, right? Um, and then the one thing to always remember is that, the one thing I always say is, never miss a Monday workout. And the reason why is because then, how many days do you have left and how many workouts do you have left? Six days. You guys are university students, right? <laughs> you have six days left to complete two more workouts, right? So that's what was important. And then, so what does that do? That has a huge impact on mentally, right? Because when you start the week, you're like, oh, I got through three workouts. But as soon as you finish in the week, the, 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 time, the day the week starts, or so technically Monday, or technically Sunday, but uh, it's when the week starts on Monday, you, it's done. You know you still have two work, only two workouts left in six days, and you only got to do about 45 minutes each. Right. So that has a huge impact on making things easier. Right. So the one thing to always remember is, especially if you're starting out, even if you're doing something that's 15, 20 minutes to just start, that's perfectly fine. Even if you just go in and do like a five minute, five, 10 minute on a treadmill, that's perfectly fine. Just start. Right. Uh, and that plays a huge factor as well. Um, OK, so. So to, um, scheduling is key. Right, but that's one thing that's what I would say. So, kind of to uh, lead off, kind of what I was saying was never missing a Monday workout. Right, then you have two, but it has to be scheduled. 
Every single one of you knows your schedule. You know when you have class, if you're working, if family time, and any other extracurricular activities you might have, you already know it ahead of time, right? You should have like a dream schedule. Now, will that schedule get messed up? 110%, yes, it will. It's called life. Life will hit you in the face. It's perfectly okay. It will happen. Your schedule will get trampled on time and time again. That's perfectly fine. It will never, I, as someone who is older than everybody here, I promise you it will continue to happen throughout life, right? And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a part of life. You just have to go, you just have to roll with those punches that come along with it. But schedule it in because you're more likely to be consistent on something that is scheduled than it becomes a habit and you're going to stay on it. That makes sense? And then when something comes up and you have a busy week, exam week, you got a bunch of exams, you got to study, you got all this time, all this stuff that's going on, no problem. If you miss a week, it's not the end of the world, right? Just continue from where you don't restart. Never have that mindset of, oh, I got to restart. No, just continue, right? Don't, and that's what, oftentimes what ends up making people fall off is that they have that mentality of, all right, I've been consistent for a week. Second week, oh, I missed the workout. Oh, I got to restart. Okay, no problem. I'll just start it again. And you're like, oh, I missed a week. And it's about Wednesday. I still haven't worked out. I don't have time. Okay, whatever. I'll start on Monday. And then Monday comes, you're like, ah, oh, you know, uh, I already missed like two weeks. Uh, just, okay, I'll just do it after. Then three months down the road, you're like, okay, maybe I should restart. Three months down the road again, you restart again. And that mentality of restarting is oftentimes, you know, what sets you back. So that's one thing is don't ever think about restarting. You're just continuing. And it's a lifelong journey. And this is not, and nutrition is never something you can ever run away from, right? And if you do try to run away from it, you will see the effects of it negatively, right? Uh, Sorry? Um, yeah, so that basically the bridge the gap, that's always one thing. Um, so I have a habit of kind of going off track of what's written down sometimes. Um, uh, so the reason why it says bridge the gap, when you have those stressful weeks, right? So understanding to be able to bridge the gap from one side to the other, right? Let the water flow under the bridge. It's perfectly fine. Stressful week comes, perfectly fine. You're not going to have a stressful month. No one generally has a stressful month unless something really goes uh, sideways. Generally for speaking, it's, you know, week, weekend, you have a wedding, uh, something or another, you know, family came in town, exams are happening, you know, work is busy, you know, extracurricular activities, anything else, whatever it may be. Something or another comes up, that's perfectly fine. Just let that week pass by. If you can get in a 15, 20 minutes workout, if you can get a five minute workout, if you just go for a walk, right, a quick 20 minute walk, that's perfectly fine as well. And then the week after, all right, everything's back to normal, let's get back at it, right? Um, and then follow the plan and be patient. That's one thing is, the reason, there's a reason why supplements <laughs> is a multi-billion dollar industry. There's a reason why, um, uh, you know, steroids is a multi-billion uh, dollar industry. You know, what's interesting about steroids is you guys will be shocked at how often, how many people, when you walk into the gym, are actually on steroids. But when you actually look around, people aren't that big, <laughs> generally speaking. And the amount of people that actually take it and have the most average um, results, it's actually shocking and the reason why is because there is no shortcut it doesn't matter if someone there is absolutely no shortcut it doesn't matter what someone wants to take you can take all the hardest steroids in the world you will not see the results you're looking for unless you don't put the work in you know so if you think about um you know someone like the rock you know if you're like oh he's on steroids yeah probably but the amount of work that is still required to be put in for him to see the results that he has but even with athletes right even those who get busted it's still the work they have to put in for them to see the results that they're then being able to showcase in whatever manner, right? So that's always one thing is that you can never run from it. There is no fruit, vegetables, supplement, anything in the world that will cure that one thing, right? Like you're seeing often now, um, you know, there's, you're having like these uh, herbal supplements and so forth. And I'm like, and honestly, 99% of it is absolute nonsense. It, it just is, right? Nothing will ever, ever beat your basic nutrition that you covered and working out, right? Um, and there are some supplements that are really good. Protein is amazing. Uh, you know, obviously whey protein powder is just basically milk, whey uh, powdered, right? That's perfectly fine. Um, you know, you obviously, you know, then there's your micronutrients that she was talking about when it comes to supplements and stuff and other stuff, that's different, right? But when it comes to trying to like um, speed up a process, no, you got to be consistent. You got to be patient and you got to keep going at it, right? regular exercise into a busy academic schedule without compromising prayer and meditation.
Oh, so similar to kind of what I was talking about. Everyone here knows their schedule. Who here doesn't know their schedule? All right, cool. So everybody here knows their schedule. Do you have an idea of what you do on the weekend, generally speaking? Everybody here has an idea of what they do on the weekend, right? It generally doesn't change that much, right? You might have one or two family members that might be different, maybe the friends you're hanging out with. But we generally, our routine, if you actually look at the human, um, you know, uh, if you follow any one human being at any given time, their habits are almost always the same. It doesn't change that much. It's generally the routine doesn't evolve that much. Like, sorry, it'll evolve, but it doesn't change from day to day as much, right? You generally have the same time you want to wake up, right? So for example, if you want to fix your sleep, go to sleep early, wake up early. If you're waking up at different times, you're going to be groggy. If you're snoozing, you're going to be groggy, right? It's going to have a huge effect on you, right? Waking up around the same time. But as soon as you wake up, you generally have the same, your routine will be almost the same. If you have a bad habit of taking your phone, that's not a good thing to do, obviously. Um, you're going to do it every day. When you go to the washroom, the steps you take, everything you do, all those things are habits that we have. So understanding that if you want to be able to be consistent, know your schedule, and then write down and be honest with when you can actually work out. And don't create these like, um, all right, so in the morning, I'm going to wake up, and I'm going to do cardio. All right, so I'm going to do it every single day. At 7 a.m., as soon as Fajr is done, I'm going to go, and I'm going to do cardio. And then at 2 p.m. on this day and 3 p.m. on that day, I'm going to go work out, and then at nighttime, I'm going to come home again and do some cardio again. No, don't do that. That's not realistic. It's just not, right? Like, maybe one day, inshallah, you can get to that, but how about you just schedule your three workouts and be like, hey, and then every single day, I'm going to go for a walk. I have um, class on this side and this side. I'm going to make sure that... You know, I take the longer route. That's a good way to do it. That adds your steps, right? It's the simplest way to do it. You already know it takes me 10, uh, 10 minutes to get from here to here. But hey, if I take the longer route, it'll take me 20 minutes. I have enough time. I have 30 minutes in between class or I have an hour in between class. I'm just gonna take the longer route. That's so much more simpler than saying I'm gonna wake up every day right after Fudger and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do cardio. That makes sense? So keeping it simple will actually help you be a lot more consistent. I think the big challenge also for students is like when you come in like the first season or the second season, you just completely block out everything. So there is a benefit in taking a break. Right? It helps with your mental therapy. Um, oh, so you gotta. Okay. So yeah, one of the the most like common mistakes is like as soon as you get to midterm season, exam season, you just block everything out. So it's super important to still take a break, which I think we still end up taking breaks scrolling breaks and like, right. Um, so it's better. You're actually, so one of the things with fitness well, is you shouldn't, what, after a workout, how should you feel? Should you be drained? Yeah. There are some workouts. Yes. That's okay too. Those are good workouts. Like I, but generally speaking, like you should feel good. You should feel a pop in your stuff. Right. When I mean pop, not really sound, but mm -hmm. yeah, you should <laughs> feel, yeah. Um, but you should feel a little bit like you should feel good. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that has a, because again, yes. Yeah, that's a very good question yeah okay so the question was how would you define a workout is this working but it's connected to the video anyways oh, it's, okay okay, okay. You know. yeah so um that's a very good question um something that i probably should have covered but it's okay that's why i said ask questions <laughs> um so Strength training is really important, right? Uh, it is something that you can never get away from, nor should you ever get away from. So what does strength training mean? Anybody? What does strength training mean? Who here knows what strength training is? So yes and no. You're not wrong. Yeah. No, but not wrong necessarily, right? So basically just to keep it very simple, right? And to as like to dumb it down as simple as possible, right? Adding resistance to your body, right? The calisthenics, lifting weights, um, you know, both. But adding resistance to your body is a huge thing. Your muscles have to lift weights, whether it be, uh, or 
push up, pull up, et cetera, right? So I'm covering everything under it, right? That has a huge impact on preserving your muscle. So there's two ways. If you want to build muscle, there's two very simple ways. Or preserve your muscles, two very simple ways. Strength training, so working out, et cetera. Protein intake, right? Increase those two things, you will put on muscle. Very simple. Like there's no if ands, or buts about it. Those two very simple things you'll maintain and you'll, you'll build, right? So when it comes to strength training, you can call it resistance training. You can call it working out, dumbbells, kettlebells, barbells, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, Indian clubs, you can go up and down the list on a million things that you can do that can help you get stronger. Now, when it comes to strength training, if you're going to be three workouts in a week, I would say do full body. All three should be full body. Sorry. Uh, I, all three should be full body. Ideally. Doesn't, you don't have to. If you want to do upper and lower, that's perfectly fine too. Upper and lower is a great split as well. Right? But start small. Adding, but lifting weights. Right? It's lifting something. And uh, this is something that usually the women ask the most uh, is, no, you will not get big and bulky. Um, if it was that easy, they, it, a lot more people would... It, if you got even closer, you always do a stop. <laughs> if you notice, oh, my arms are a little too big, my shoulder, you, all you literally have to do is like, all right, I'm just going to miss a workout today or, or tomorrow and just pull back from the workout. I'm going to go a little lighter and so forth, all right? But you're just not. The amount of food, and same thing goes with guys. You can work out all day long. You're not going to get big and bulky just because uh, you can, but the amount of food that is required uh, and the amount of working out that is required, three workouts definitely won't get you there, all right? Uh, and, but it's just the amount of time and stuff. So that's one thing is just a myth that, you know, is important for us to kind of try to, you know, die down as well. Sorry, you had a question? Okay, so that's a good question. So she was asking basically, how to how to basically plan out your workout? That makes that's what specific exercises? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So there are certain exercises that will target multiple muscle groups, and then there's certain exercises that will be very isolated. If you're doing three workouts in a week, for example, you probably shouldn't be focused on doing bicep curls as much. Just because the bicep is focused on a very small muscle, it's the vast majority of people do it because more aesthetics. Um, I barely ever do a bicep curl just because in my pull-ups and my pulling does most of my will 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 hit my bicep anyways. I'm more focused on back uh, and and being more athletic when it comes to my goals, right? Um, but for example, bicep curls probably won't be as important, but <clears throat> a squat super important. Uh, whether it be body weight. Dumbbell, kettlebell, barbell, uh, that's a good way to start up if you want, right? So you start body weight, make sure your form's good, and then work your way up to a barbell all the way. Uh, you know, dumbbell, kettlebell, barbell, et cetera. Um, you know, that works multiple muscle groups because it's working your entire legs, but then your core has to brace, right? And then your shoulders have to be nice and braced and tight. Uh, chest up, back engage. That is a good full body exercise, right? Um, Push-ups is a full body exercise, right? It Primarily targets chest, triceps, shoulders because of the push exercise, right? Anything back, the entire back muscles, anything push, chest, triceps, shoulders, generally speaking. But your back has to stabilize and be able to brace your core, engage. Otherwise, your lower back is going to sink in. Your body should be nice and straight. Um, and then your legs have to power into the ground, right? So a push-up is a great full body exercise to do. Just the one thing, especially for guys, are guilty of this. Actually, one thing I'll tell you guys. Uh, women are generally better at working out than guys are uh, because of our ego. We all got big egos, and I'm guilty of this too. Generally speaking, and, and I see this with my clients, that when it comes to form, when it comes to following along and, 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 and listening and, and going there, generally women are a lot more mindful. For example, one of the things I see a lot of guys do when it comes to their push-up is just here. It's literally just half reps, and it's just a lot fast. It's really, really fast, and it's not full range. Like, your shoulders aren't going all the way back. It's not full range all the way. Um, your hip is, like, sink down, so it's just your upper body doing this the entire time. Um, Form, form over everything, every single time. I'd rather have you lift less and your form be perfect um, than doing the opposite, right? So that um, uh, deadlifts are great. Uh, I would recommend trap bar deadlifts instead because you stand inside as opposed to forward. So um, center of gravity is just easier on the lower back and stuff. Uh, but yeah, finding exercises uh, that are more, that cover multiple muscle groups. Uh, but anytime you guys have any questions, just 
send me um just DM me on Instagram if anything, and I can send you a list. Uh, that actually might be just a little easier, and I'll just send you a list of exercises and stuff. That'd be good as well. Wait, you mentioned that it takes you an hour and a half. I, like most days, I'm working just forty. I don't have a lot of time because I have, I literally have three year olds around me, and I tell them to stay on the other side of the room forty minutes. So I'll do like a full strength training. So sometimes it's like the rest, yeah, the rest period. You don't realize how much time you end up wasting, so you can do a full workout, full body. Workout. Yeah, and then okay. supersetting as well. Like, so for example, if you do a squat, uh, the next exercise is to do a pull uh, back exercise, right? <laughs> you pull it. So if you rest ten seconds, your legs are resting while you're pulling. And then once you're done that, you can rest a minute and then you go back into that. So now you've actually just completed almost half hour worth of workout within that span. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, can you repeat that question? would be best. Okay. So the question was, what is the cause of skin inflammation? Um, and then what would be the best um, foods to eat? So I, I want to take a step back. So the word inflammation, we hear that a lot, right? Where it's like, I have inflammation. A lot of people don't know what that means. So I'm going to give you guys a definition of what that is. So basically, so skin inflammation is more like you could see it. That's a little different than the word inflammation too. So I'll break it down. Um, so inflammation Basically, what happens in our bodies is the stress that our bodies go to, and not just like mental health stress, but like the stress of um, like the pollu pollutants we have outside, right? Or the stress of consistently putting unhealthy foods in our body, the stress of not um, working out, all of those things, right? So over a long period of time, basically what happens is in our body, these little things called free radicals, right? And these are bad guys. Think of the little like bad guys in our bodies start creating havoc and over time, that's that's inflammation. So those free radicals, and then over time, that increases your risk for all of these health concerns, right? So when you hear people getting like the big C word cancer or like diabetes, all of those things, it's like years of buildup of that inflammation, which is from the free radicals. Now, how to fight that is, have you guys heard of the word antioxidants, right? Antioxidants. So basically think of those as these guys that come in as like little warriors and they fight those free radicals in your body. And so you're probably like, okay, which bottle of antioxidants should I buy? No, so antioxidants are gonna be in those different colored fruits and vegetables have different antioxidants. So like white garlic has one antioxidant called allicin. So that is a certain type of antioxidant. Um, you'll have like the base, literally different colors. Green will have different antioxidants. So that's where eating a variety of the colors will make such a big difference consistently, not just one week, two weeks, like literally for the rest of your lives, consistently doing that. So that's like the inflammation inside of your body. And then when it comes to people who have like skin issues, right? So sometimes it does go back to their nutrition. So if you're eating a lot of processed um, foods, that contributes to that, right? So switching over to, and people make a mistake where they're like, oh, I'm going to go gluten-free. And then they're like, oh, I feel so much better ever since I've gotten gluten-free. Does anyone know what gluten is? What is gluten? Didn't know you. Do you guys know what gluten is? Can anyone define what gluten is? It's bad. It's bad. So what is gluten? No one knows, right? A lot of people don't know. So gluten is just a protein in the flour. It's just a protein in a flour. So yes, there are some people that have like celiac disease that have like a legitimate like allergy to gluten, but the average, it's such a small percentage, but the average person but however, over consuming white carbs, like, you know, white bread, just like way too many white carbs, that's the problem. The problem is not the gluten in the flour. So if you're having a smaller portion, the right portion of your carbs consistently, more, more um, fresh fruits, vegetables, I always say more vegetables and fruit. So we always think of vegetables and fruit interchangeably. They're not. Um, you want to have more vegetables than you have fruit. Okay. Um, fruit is not bad for you, but it's still, it's natural sugar. So smaller portion about like two to three servings in a day, whereas vegetables should be anywhere from five to 10 servings. Right. So for better skin, you want to shift over to that more water. Water is a huge thing. Um, I always say, and then like a lot of times with, with the ladies, we focus a lot on skincare. Honestly, what you put inside is going to have such a bigger impact. Like if you have an extra 50 bucks, like spend that on fruits and vegetables and actually eat it. Don't just let it go bad in the fridge. Right. That will make a big difference. Is there, there was a question here somewhere? Yeah. Yeah.
For sure. So the question was about anyone who has like a lactose intolerance. So that is actually very common. So many people actually have um, some sort of intolerance. So basically what that means is in our body, in our stomach, we, we need an enzyme called lactase. Um, and so if your body doesn't produce lactase, when you drink milk, uh, it just doesn't digest. So that's where you get a stomach ache. Um, a lot of South Asian people actually are lactose intolerant. Now, interestingly enough, a lot of, I don't know if you guys have ever heard people will say, oh, when I go, go back home, I can like have the dairy and like, I'm okay. But when I come here, so the, the, the cows here, they are called a one cow. So the type of milk they produce is like this a one protein in there. And the cows in Europe, South Asia, they have, and Middle East as well, they are A2 cows. So they produce A2 milk. Um, and so I actually thought I was lactose intolerant. And so they recently um, started selling A2 milk. Have you guys seen A2 milk? You're like, what is that? It's like this, if you ever go to like the dairy section, you guys will see it now because I told you about it. This is A2. So um, I used to think, because if, if I drink a glass of milk, my stomach hurts and I'm like, but I was fine with like yogurt and things like that. So I was like, am I lactose intolerant? Um, but I tried that A2 milk and it actually worked. Like I was able to drink the milk. It was very, very interesting. Um, on that note of lactose intolerance, sometimes you're like, I'm going to go dairy free. I did that in the past. I was like, like very vegan at one point where I cut out like all this dairy. Now what happens if you, he's the opposite. Yeah. I works for you very differently. But so at that point I was like, so I, I feel pretty good on mostly vegetarian, but I'll still have a little bit of meat here and there. But yeah, I went through this phase where I'm like, I'm going to experiment with being very like almost vegan. So I cut out dairy. Now what happens when you cut out dairy, your body actually stops producing the lactase that you need to digest dairy. And then, so it was actually a Ramadan. I was like, I'm going to do a vegan Ramadan. He did not participate. That was just me. So when Eid came around, I just wanted to have like a little bit of the dessert. My stomach hurt so much. And so I basically gave myself like an intolerance. Um, and so then I built back up to it. So that's one thing. It's like, you have to be careful. You don't want to just like cut out foods. Um, but yeah, if like a glass of milk, try the A2 milk. You There's also lactose free milk. Like if you actually have lactose intolerance, you can do that. Um, but yeah, dairy is really, and Canadian dairy has amazing standards. So a lot of times when you see like a lot of the information where you're like, oh my God, there's antibiotics in the dairy. That's the American dairy. Um, but Canadian dairy has amazing standards. Like anytime you see Canadian dairy, like there's like a blue cow, you know, the standards are going to be really good. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, but yeah, like yogurt, cheeses, uh, cottage cheese. Like we go through a lot of cottage cheese at our, in our house. I, I, yeah. American. It's usually American dairy. Yeah. Like our standards actually here, uh, especially when it comes to like health Canada, uh, it, it's very, very high. Like, especially when you get like, for example, supplements, if you're going to go supplements, um, Canada has some of the most strictest, uh, sometimes a little too strict when it comes to supplements, like anything that, um, that they start to even question, they'll just put it on the ban list. So, so it's almost, almost to an extreme. So like there, we've been to supplement companies as well and seen like behind the scenes and stuff, like you have to register, you got to sign in like ahead of time, like days ahead, everything is so meticulous on how they go about it. So that's why, you know, what's in the nutritional label is there, but in the U S even though it's a very litigious country, uh, their, their, their standards are much lower and their supplements are very questionable and they've had, you know, lawsuits upon lawsuits uh, just because you don't know. Uh, here, it's the opposite. It's, you're almost guaranteed that what's in there is in there. So that's one thing. Can, can you generally, like when it comes to our food and uh, supplementations and so forth, we generally have the highest standards. So if there's something we could be proud of, I guess, <laughs> there we go. The, okay, there's one question that was good was, um, is cardio only useful for weight loss? Uh, yeah. So, um, so is cardio only good for weight loss? No. Um, it has a huge impact on your heart, uh, which we all know is very important. Uh, so that's that's a huge impact. But also your your overall health, fitness, and everything in general, right? Even though those, like for example, um, you know, you just want to lift heavy and be strong and big muscles. Well, you still need to inc um, increase your capacity, your endurance capacity to be able to keep going, right? So cardio has a huge impact. Uh, when it comes to recovery, um, any one of us ever sit in a, in a car for a long period of time on a long drive afterwards, we all get out, we're all like sore, you're like trying to stretch out, you're trying to loosen up. That's perfectly normal, but that's soreness and just gets your muscles are really tight. You need to get out, just move around again, get blood circulation, right? So cardio is important, especially on days when you're feeling really sore. Don't just sit around, move around. So do some form of cardio and get the blood circulation going. So there's numerous, and again, same thing when it comes to mental health as well, it has a huge impact on that as well. So there's uh, like limitless numbers of things that, um, you know, has a hu uh, cardio has a huge impact on
happy for body right for for happy times for me yeah is that optimal or because we hear a lot about like physical life or like yeah. stuff just so the reason why if you're only do, if you're only doing three times in a week i would say do uh full body is because you're hitting multiple muscle groups multiple times in a week so you're going to see better results as opposed to say you did a push right so push generally would be like chest shoulders triceps for example right um then you're spending an entire seven days basically until you come back to it it takes about two to three days for it to recover right so if you wait if you did say monday to Thursday, Saturday, you still had more than enough time to recover to now be able to hit multiple muscle groups again, right? Unless you do Monday, Tuesday, thir uh, Wednesday, for example, then obviously you're about, right? Like you can do back to back days. That's okay. But try to have a little bit more split time. And the biggest thing is recovery. Once you've recovered, you can go back at it, right? So you'll have people ask me like, oh, can I hit multiple? Can I hit the same muscle group multiple times in a week? Yeah. You just got to wait for it to recover. And it takes a few days. Arms takes a few days. So sometimes some of the bigger muscles take a little bit longer. Uh, generally, people realize like their legs take a little bit longer, and that's and and that's um, right. So then just spacing it out, right? Um, so yeah, do, that yeah. So you don't like if you're going to be doing say four or five times, then yeah, you can do push pull legs, and you can and go based on that. That's fine too. It just depends on how often you're working out. Okay, so that's a good question. So he's asking, should you go to failure? So um, yes and no. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying that is because if you want to build muscle, right, you have to get to you have to get to that point of exhaustion of failure, right? However, the vast majority of people they have not taken the time to work on their form to understand how to get to failure, um, and so what ends up happening is they're going to end up hurting themselves. Right. So yes, you do need to get to close to it, but if you just increase your volume to add an extra set, do a few more reps, I always say stop too short. And so leave two in the bank in the sense that if you were to get to say, if someone was telling you get to 12 reps and they're, you're doing say a dumbbell bench press, for example, right. And you're going one, five, seven, nine, 11, 12. And that's clearly too easy. Right. But now if you get up there and you're like seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and you get to 12. And I asked you, can you do two more? You're like, that would be the max. I can't push anything. I, I could probably do two more. That's where you should stop. Because, and then, because what ends up happening is, and I see this across the board with not just young people, let I me mean, guys who have been working out for a long time, their shoulders are everywhere and they're started. The moment you notice that shoulder stop, drop the weight, because you're going to mess up your rotator cuff. You're going to cause a lot more harm than good. Right. So then that balance is, is it worth it? Because now you're doing it. Right. So that's one thing is, yeah, you'd ideally like to get to failure, but I, the way I was thinking was earn the right to do that. Right. So take time, understand your form, spend enough time working out uh, and make sure all of those building blocks are in place. Then yeah, then you can get there right? and you can still build muscle, especially newbie gains. That's a, that's a thing. Uh, beginners will get much better gains as someone who's been working out for a long time. And it's just, um, it's just physiology, just how our body works. When you start working out, you will notice it adapt so quickly and see really good results early on. Oh, on sorry. <laughs> we'll go back and forth. Yeah, you can go. Sorry, uh, second part. So, um, so what she's asking is, um, uh, what was the first part again? Okay, ideal <laughs> time. Sorry, um, I'm a father of three. I'm allowed to go have a little bit uh, space really out. That's okay. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. I'm older than everybody here, so it's okay. Uh, it's okay. I'm still stronger than everybody, so it's okay. Sorry, I can brag a little bit. I'm allowed. I'm older. Um, so one thing is, um, when it comes to timing, technically, yes, there is a perfect time. Uh, but technically no, in the sense that if it doesn't match your schedule, right? Imagine if I told you 1 PM is your, is the best time to work out, but say you work nine to five, that's not the best time anymore. Cause you can't work out at that hour. Right. But you can, oops, but you can work out before work and after work. So that becomes the best time that you can work out. <clears throat> the biggest thing is making sure that your nutrition before and after is in place. Right. So that's going to be the biggest factor. Like if you're going in and you're just hungry, um, and say, Say you have a class that you do not enjoy and it's like two hours long and you haven't had breakfast. So now you're hangry, 
you're, you don't like the professor, you don't like the people in the class, and you have to sit there for two hours, and now you're ending class and you're just like, oh, God. probably not the best. <laughs> right? That makes sense. Right? So the best time will always be the time that fits your schedule. Right? Like for me, I drop my kids to school and I go straight to go work out. Always the best time. Any time to have to work out in the evening, and there are days I have to work out in the evening. And for, if you ask some people, they love doing it. But for me, it's the worst because then it affects my morning because it takes me a little longer to go to sleep. My central nervous system is firing. I'm like hopped up with energy. Um, and then now it affects my sleep, right? So then, right? But so it has to be on case-by-case -case basis. You got to look at your schedule. That makes sense? And then when it comes to recovery, so generally bigger muscles take a little bit longer uh, to recover. Smaller muscles will take a little bit shorter, sometimes a day or two, right? Like you might feel good within two days. Um, hydration, your sleep and, and nutrition, those three things are going to be key when it comes to, uh, recovery, right? So making sure six to eight hours of sleep every single night, uh, making sure your hydration, like you mentioned, nutrition, like you mentioned, make sure those things are in place, but generally you will have a, especially when you start working out, you will notice very quickly. It's not, sometimes you'll work out, you won't feel sore at all, but you'll notice a difference in like your grip strength. You're like, ah, oh, things just feel a little bit high, heavier. Even though I'm not sore, I'm just, I notice a difference in my grip. Your grip is a very good indicator for how you feel, right? It has a huge correlation to overall health as well, right? So it's always important to work on your grip strength, right? Um, but the biggest thing is going to be first check your sleep. If you notice there's days where like, oh, I feel like I have a lot of energy, that means you're feeling good. Go back, get back to the gym. And sometimes you might be able to get four workouts or even five workouts in that week and you feel fine, right? And that's perfectly, and that's good. But the thing is, the good thing about starting to work out is you start to build a better relationship and understanding your body, right? So if I give you a day, I'm like, ah, two days are good. But I'm good the next day most times, right? Sometimes I'm good the day after. Sometimes I'm like, there's early days where I have my workout scheduled, and I'm like, I think I need a day or two. I'm just beat up, right? And I'll take a day or two, right? Does that make sense? Right? So you have to start getting more in tune with how your body's responding. And you'll notice in the beginning you able to go through it. And then once you start to catch an idea, you're like, all right, I, 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 I've kind of figured it out. Does that answer the question? I know it's kind of vague, but it, it is on a case by case basis. In that sense. Also, yeah. This is that you don't have to do anything the next day. Like you could do, say you could strength training the next day. You could maybe do some cardio or like a full walk. It doesn't mean it should be like, you should just be like sitting around for two days to recover. Like, yeah. I think that's like, you could do something else. Like sometimes we'll like, like you yeah. should do it every single day. A, a day should never pass where you don't do something. Whether it be a walk, a long walk, whether it be, you know, cardio of some form, uh, lift some, every single day you should do something, right? And it could be steady state cardio, so just going for a walk. Every single day you should go for a walk, right? The good thing is you guys being in university, that's a huge, that's, it's a lot easier to get your steps in. But keep making sure that it becomes a habit so it's easier to do after you've done university. Right? Thanks. So he's asking about a very specific strategy within lifting called drop sets. So you lift a weight, you lower the weight, you lift it again, you lower the weight, you lift it again. It's very exhausting. It is a great tool, but it's a tool, right? Um, it's no different than supersetting or anything else that you use. Um, there are certain times I'll use it, but it could also drain you a lot faster, right? So pick specific things that you want to really try to focus on. The only thing is, again, it comes back to form you can very easily start to lose your form, right? Um, how long have you been working out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, consistently. Four months consistently? How many days a week do you go? Yeah. Okay. But you're consistent four or five times for four months? Okay. So if you're adding drop sets, start adding it on the last set closer to the end of the workout or midway through the workout, right? Cause it's, for example, if you're doing, say, uh, if you're doing a uh, dumbbell bench, I keep going back to it, but use that example, right? You have a hundred, you pump those out. Cause you look like you can do, probably do a hundred easily, right? You drop the weight. Someone gives uh, your, your partner gives you 70, you pump those out by the time. Say you, say you do like three drop sets. You're exhausted. It's going to be much harder for you to have good form and lift a little bit heavier on the next ones. Not that you can't do it. I would say first start off with doing it on stuff later on. And then over time, then you can start playing with it a little bit earlier. 
So generally, whenever I've done drop sets, or whenever I do drop sets, I usually have three to four. Generally, is what I do, right? But I and sometimes I'll do two. Sometimes I'll do three. Like I have an idea of where uh, of how I'm feeling and the weight I know I can do. Uh, but I also usually do it on, on cables because it's just a quick, right? And I don't have to have like a whole bunch, right? Um, so that, that's always an easy way to do it. Um, like for example, if you're gonna be doing biceps, if you do the preacher curl that has a cable machine attached to it, right? That's easy, just make the adjustment. And then you have an idea of how much you can do, right? I'd say is eight to 10 reps on the first one, right? Now try to match that same number, drop the weight, Try to match that same number. Drop the weight. Try to match that same number or pass it. No, it's fine. Give it a shot. Yeah. You, you, you will definitely be exhausted, but don't make it the first exercise. Hold it till, especially for the first time you're doing it, wait till later on. Don't do it in the beginning because then you're going to be like, oh, the rest of the work I'm too, I'm, I'm like just beat to do. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. We're in. Yeah. Well, Okay, that, that, that's like a the Ramadan question is a, it's like a whole talk on its. Because I saw it on the questionnaire. So we the Ramadan questionnaire. So there were, there was two things. I'm like, we're going to be doing. I'm like, because everything she said right now is very. If you want it to be more, specific, yeah, we're gonna do more talks on it. We can even come back here for Ramadan if you guys want us to do, yeah, because want to do yeah, because it's talk, yeah, we can, as long as we schedule ahead of time, yeah, maybe we can do that. Because I, I, we saw it in the in the thing, I wasn't gonna answer it because I'm like, it's so it's we literally take, yeah, and we literally take an hour, but the whole thing about you could still do it with the family, it's thinking about the macros again. Right. So the carbs, the morning, one of the I will because you did ask about Sahur specifically, I will say one of the worst things you can eat for Sahur is a bowl of cereal. Cause literally it's that what I said, right? It spikes your blood sugar. By the time you wake up for the day, like 9, 10 a.m., you're like starving. That's why a lot of times people are like, What's the point of me eating Sahur? I'm gonna I'm like starving anyway when I'm starting the day. So it's like making sure you eat a better, um, more balanced. One of the like our go-tos is like overnight oats. Like we it's it's funny, we eat very differently, but when it comes to Ramadan, we'll both like pull out our overnight oats. Um, so on our Instagram website as well, we have, so there's like a Ramadan section on our website. Just go to the next page. Cause it has our, like it, our handles and our website. So we have like the healthy Muslims.com forward slash Ramadan has like a bunch of, um, recipes and specific stuff. And we'll have, we'll be posting more as well. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, uh, we also have a book, yeah. right? Um, uh, like a physical copy book, um, uh, as well called the healthy Ramadan guide. Um, yeah. Um, but another thing is always keep in mind when it comes to Ramadan, what's the one thing that, you know, we're always taught by like our, our scholars and our teachers is prepare, right? Spiritually, right? Start to do a little extra and so forth. So that way on the first day of Ramadan, it's not too hard, right? Another thing is like, you know, start fasting Monday and Thursdays and so forth, right? To be able to prepare. So that way the Ramadan is, uh, you know, our Ramadan is easier and, you know, we can do more ibadah and so forth. But the same thing with nutrition and fitness, start preparing, right? So when it comes to your workouts, you know, I, in the book, everything is covered as well. But even on our social media and everything, you'll see it. Everything is covered as well. But inshallah, when we come back, we'll, we'll cover it. Um, we can talk about it more in detail as well. Inshallah, we can maybe schedule and plan out. I did an Instagram, um, like, what is it, a reel? on? Because I, I have been fasting because the days are so short. So I did, like, an example of, like, what I eat in my fasting day. So you can check that out as well. Yeah. This side? <laughs> yeah. So that depends. How many times a week are you working out? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, technically, depending on how your recovery 
is, right? So your hydration, your nutrition, your sleep, right? So it could be 48 hours, but say, you know, you were just binging on junk food all day, all, all, all the last two days and your sleep is all over the place, then you're going to require a lot more time, right? Than 48. Yeah, you should be fine. So like, for example, when it comes to the thing, um, how, how do you portion out your workouts? <laughs> how do you schedule your workouts? So like, what is your split like? Like, what are you doing? So do you do push pull legs, rest, and then push pull legs again? Okay. Isn't how old are you? Yeah, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest. There's nothing. That, there's nothing wrong with that necessarily, right? Um, at 21, you're. So no, so technically you're yes and no. So for example, the way you got to think about it is when you're, when you're doing a back exercise, right? So that's what I mean. So your other muscle groups are still working, right? So it's not that, you're, right? However, I would still say, make sure you have at least a recovery day or two, right? Um, in there, right? Even if you don't do it, like based on a week, you're just like, all right, you just push both legs. All right, today I'm going to rest. All right, and repeat. Uh, and so it could kind of get jumbled up and that's perfectly fine if it fits your routine, right? But just making sure that you're having at least one day off, uh, not to, you can just do mobility that day, you can go for a run, right? Just, or you can just go for a walk, allowing yourself to recover. But again, if you feel fine and you're like, I feel good, like I, I feel fine, like I don't, I'm not tired, I'm not falling asleep in class, um, you, know, uh, you know, everything else is, is still fine, then by all means, you can go at it, right? You got to remember, when, when you hear advice on social media, it's very generic, right? Um, for example, here, here's one that's controversial. Uh, you guys ever listen to, like, Xu um, give talks on social media and people get outraged by what they said? We've all heard of them, right? We've all heard of the like, imams and so forth saying stuff, right? The problem with that cancel, cancel culture aspect of it, and the same thing comes with fitness, is that the context of which that person is speaking, they're speaking to you. I'm speaking to you guys. You can't hear the question that he asked online, right? Now, imagine I said something that people are like, oh, how could you say that? Well, I was speaking to him, <laughs> right? So same thing when it comes to fitness is that the context of what you're putting in, right? I'm going to be at a higher level than you are, which actually means I need more, a little bit more rest than you do because I can lift heavier than you can, right? Um, so I need, and my, I'm older than you are, Right? So for me, I need to make sure my rest days are a lot. I, I need to make sure I have more rest days than you do, right? Because I could throw you through a wall and you'll be able to bounce back really quickly. But now say someone who hasn't been working out consistently, I would have to be a lot more mindful to them. Does that make sense? Right? So that's one thing is like important is that you have to go based on how you feel. Take a day. It's perfectly fine, right? Um, but if you feel like you're able to get back at it, that's okay. But if you notice that your strength isn't there, like you're not able to lift as heavy or your strength is starting to stagnate. You're not able to lift as much. You're, you're feeling a little more tired Then yes, you do have to pull it back. Yeah. I, I would say, I would, yeah, I, honestly, I would say even if you did like, um, if you did four days, for example, and you did upper, lower, upper, lower, right. And then say two or three days in between, you did like sprint workouts and jumps and, and, and sleds. And more conditioning work. <laughs> uh, it depends on what your goal is. If you're just looking just strictly bodybuilding, that's very different. If you're looking to be an athlete, then put, uh, upper lower is the way to go. Right? So again, it comes down to your goal and what you're trying to accomplish. That makes sense? But yeah, just anytime you go, just message me online and I'll walk through. Because if you show me your workout, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what you should change and so forth too then. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> So that's like a lot on TikTok these days, right? I feel like for, yeah. for women, I think it's like yeah, but just, so yeah. so the reason why that ends up happening. So yeah, so she's talking about um like calisthenics, body weight uh, Pilates, etc., as opposed to lifting and stuff. So social media is always very polarizing, right? Um, if you said something like, like if I answered a question, it depends, it won't go viral. But if I said bodybuilding is haram. 
that will go viral. Don't please don't post that. <laughs> right? Uh, that would go viral. Right. Um, so that's one thing is um, understanding. Uh, you know, there's the reason why most women kind of uh, run from um, you know lifting weights is because we've all seen women who bodybuild, who are bodybuilders, and they're just big and they're just like oh, the entire time. And the vast majority of women do not want to do that, but they do want to be in shape. Right. They do want to be healthy. They do want to be strong. Right. They do want et cetera. Like I said before, you can lift weights and you won't look like that. I promise you won't look like that. Because A, the amount of stuff that they're probably taking on the side that we're not allowed to talk about. Um, on top of that, um, the amount of workouts that they do. Right. Like, if, for example, if you like you see this all the time, you see women lifting like five, 10 pound dumbbells. They have those little, little cute looking little ones. Like sometimes they're pink and yellow and they're like the, like you can grab a plate that is heavier than that. You can grab a chair that is heavier than that. Yeah, that's not adding resistance, right? But it's just something that people have always done, right? So a lot of times it's just misconceptions. Like if you lift a 20 pound dumbbell, I just have the same thing with her. Like we have, I, like there's a little mini gym we have in our basement, right? No, she does now, but there's times when she's like, I don't want it. But even though she knows, like she knows about fitness more than the average person, right? But even then she still has it in the back of her mind because you see it on social media. You're like, ah, but what if? I no, so I will say that when I lift heavy, I'm like super hungry, and it like and I end up like I it's a lot like for me. So that's where I'm like I get a bit turned off. But yeah, I feel like you have to have for women you do and for guys too. You have to make sure your nutrition is there. But I think we definitely like as women we do need to be strength based because like the challenge is a lot of times like when you go into a gym. First of all, it's hard to find women only space. But if it's like a mixed gym, the 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 weight training area is like all guys, so it doesn't happen. But even at home, if you just get a few things, um, even though, what is it, the resistance bands, those are really yeah. great. Um, but yeah, Pilates is really great because it's still strength training, but it's using body. Um, but you don't have to, like, shy away. Uh, I find one thing that, like, I, I usually go with what I, like, enjoy. Like, right, I actually just need to go to start it. I'll, I'll disagree heavier. with the strength training and Pilates part. Because okay. <laughs> I, I think the whole summer, I went with, like, not lifting heavy, but I still was, like, Actually, I'm it's a hell it's a, it's it's a hell of a workout i'm not yeah. saying it's not it is it is a good workout you just won't want to find me there but but yeah i think you still need strength training some, some, some but you yes to, like pick it it shouldn't just be like oh i'm only gonna do Pilates for like, like, so one thing with us like our goals change all the time like i was powerlifting for probably a year or two right uh i was significantly heavier right um uh, but now those aren't my goals Right now, for me, like I want to get faster, quicker. I want to be able to jump high. I want to be able to be more athletic. Right. Um, like I'm seeing my kids, uh, all three of them are getting older. And like I want to be able to run and do stuff with them. I can't necessarily do that as much if I'm powerlifting because I'm going to get a lot more tired because my cardio and conditioning isn't necessarily there. So I want to make sure that I have the energy to keep up with them. Right. So say you do it for a three month period and then say you're like, all right, now I want to do calisthenics or six months. All right. Hey, I want to do Pilates or and that's okay too. And it keeps things more exciting. Like it doesn't feel like, oh, this is it. Right. And then you can change things up. Right. So you could try different um, like different things out there. Um, like and all, she actually changes things up a lot more than I do. Um, like I'm OK with the boring workout because for me, it's not boring. Like it might look boring, but for me, like I love it. Right. So for me, I can just go in and do the same. And that's OK. But changing it up, say you do like, all right, for three months, this is what I'm, I'm just going to lift weights for three months and I'm going to do cardio on this day. So that's fine. All right. Three months after this, I'm going to do Pilates. All right. Six months, I'm going to do calisthenics because I like calisthenics more. Right. And that's OK, too. Right, so you can constantly keep changing things too. Yeah. 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 So that's what I genuinely do. I like. I get. Yeah, I get bored. <laughs> that's the thing. And so I do like. Yeah. I'll do like two to three times strength training. In the summer, I was actually running a lot, so I'd like run five k, and so I was I was still doing strength training, but not as heavy because I wanted to focus more on that. But right now, it's getting colder. It gets dark outside, and I don't feel comfortable running outside in the dark. So now also, we have a lot of coyotes in our area, too. So, yeah, that's part of it. <laughs> Should we, we have to go back? Is there any, like, there was back there? Who? You said the most optimal thing is to the protein as far as you did. So, uh, things such as white bread, like high protein, like, wouldn't that cause like any kind of thing that I can Yeah. Uh, compared to like a good product? Yes. So, white bread is basically, so, like a slice of white bread is basically like white sugar. Very, very simply processed. So bread is one of those things you do want to switch over to a whole grain. Um, I really like like a whole grain sprouted bread. Um, if you guys send me a message, I can send you guys like links and stuff. But that would be, yes, you don't, you want to have carbs, but you don't want to like spike it. White bread. However, once again, white rice, you could still do white rice. Um, 
pair it with protein if it's the right portion size um, and veggies and you should be okay, right? Also post-workout, that's when you can load up on the carbs a little bit more too. So you can increase a little bit and you should be okay. You can- that was, that was my goal. Yeah, yeah, but white bread, honestly, that's like very, very processed. Like we generally don't bring white bread at yeah. home at all. It's- Bread should never stay soft when it's left out. Yeah. Right? Um, you think about regardless of what part of the world like our family is from, bread is very like uh, a norm within Muslims, generally speaking, yeah. right? I'm generalizing, obviously, right? Um, whenever our moms or aunts or anyone made bread, you leave it on the counter, what happens over time? It starts to harden. Right? It doesn't, right? It'll start to mold. But when you get bread from the store, the white they're bread? adding chemicals to that to soften it, right? And then they'll even mold and it'll still stay soft. Like that's not normal, right? It's like margarine, for example, which is disgusting, right? Like that's not, that's not normal. Like this thing should, like, even if you look at uh, certain ice cream, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not what, it called, frozen the dirt. dessert. It's not actually yeah, ice cream. If you put them in the sink underwater, it's still the same thing, right? So that's one thing and just be mindful of, but if you go with oh we brought it but you leave that out it's start hard right? yeah. it's proper natural right right so that's one thing to kind of try to find the more natural yeah it and it does taste take a while to adjust to the taste because if you've been eating white bread and I think that we all had like oh, yeah, we, 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 we love yeah, white bread like, like, like we grew up like we used to have our own little or it's our cabinet of just junk food right like, yeah we grew up with that my and I still have those so my kids run to <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I've seen like nutrition value from yeah the car the carbs aren't the issue with when it comes to that specific right. no so so yeah so uh white so the question was like the the carbs are similar on say whole grain bread versus white bread so the one that i'm talking about whole grain sprouted bread what they do is they take a um, variety of grains they sprout it so it's like little like roots and stuff come out that releases more protein. It's easier on the digestive system and it um, increases the nutrients. Then they grind that and they make the bread. So yes, the carbs will still, I think it's on, on average, a slice of bread will be anywhere from 12 to 15 grams of carbs, right? So you're looking at just carbs, but the fiber will be there and there'll be more protein um, as well. So once again, it's not just that it has 15 grams of carbs. That's the issue. Like it's not, and that's where once again, like with the, like the bodybuilding world, there's just like a carb is a carb, a calorie is a calorie. Not necessarily because if you eat a white slice of bread versus if you eat the whole grain, you should also not just eat the bread on its own, even if it's whole grain, you should pair it with protein and veggies. But yeah, the nutritional quality is different, even if it says carbs. Uh, another way is when you look at carbs, you should also look at the sugar and you should look at the fiber. So the fiber, you can subtract that from the carbs and that'll be the net carbs. So if it says 15 grams of carbs, but it says four grams of fiber, 15 minus four, it's actually 11 grams net carbs. So that's the difference there. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that is a the question was about IBS. That is very specific to a specific disease, which um is a very complex question. So I wouldn't be able to necessarily answer that'd be like a whole session on its own. Um if that person what does want to reach out to me, I can give them some guidance. But with IBS, it is a medical condition. Um so I don't want to give a generic answer. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay, on days you don't feel like eating healthy. Days you don't feel like he eating healthy or you haven't eaten healthy and your motivation is down. Okay, so that's a good question. So that is something that will never go away permanently, yeah. right? Like I get that. Like I love working out. I'm like, there's days where I'm telling her, yeah, I'm about to hit the gym. She comes back an hour later. It's like, I thought you were going to the gym. Like, oh no, I am, I am. Uh, and then she comes back another hour. I'm like, oh, I'm a little hungry right now. I got to eat a little snack. You know, then I got to take another hour and I'll start playing with the kids. I'll start doing stuff. I'm just wasting time. But it's like not as motivated. Perfectly fine to feel that. The biggest thing is making sure you're strict on your schedule, right? Don't, don't mess with your schedule, right? And then a lot of times it's get changed, right? Get changed into your workout clothes to leave. And then start, if you're working out at home, just start the warm up. Just mentally tell yourself, all right, let me just start a warm up. Let me just start stretching. Let me just start going through it. And once you get that, your heart rate starts to go up, you will start to work out and go through it. But a lot of times it's having, for example, I tell this to people who work nine to five. If you know that once you go home, you're not going to leave, which is the vast majority of people, and you're not working out at home, you work out at a gym, then don't go straight home. 
go straight to the gym. Because once you're at the gym, there's nothing else to do at the gym, right? You've got to do something. You got to be working out. Might not be the best workout. That's okay. Even if you're like, you know what I mean? I'm not going to do an hour. I'm just doing 20, 30 minutes. That's better than not. Because there will be some days where you're like, you want to work out. Some days you don't. You can tell yourself, all right, no problem. Today, 20 minute workout. I'll put the timer on. And I'll tell you, you can put a timer on. Sometimes those are the best workouts. Some of the best workouts I have are the ones that I'm like, I only have an hour. I only have 45 minutes. Those are some of the best workouts because my rest is short and I'm super focused and I'm not wasting time in any way. And I'm just like zoned in, I'm going, right? So when you have those days, if you need to be like, all right, tell yourself, all right, I won't do a full workout. I'll do half. That's okay, right? And understanding that, telling yourself that it's okay not to be motivated right now, but the rest of the week, I don't have time. Right. So being okay with having that conversation with yourself, because, you know, it's like, all right, I have to be at someone's place tomorrow all day. Um, I have this X, Y, Z event I have to be at Saturday. I have this going on. I'm not going to be able to work out. Today's the only day I have. Okay, fine. Let me just go. Right. So just having that conversation with yourself as well. It, it gets you going as well. I think another thing is like accountability. So like in university, it's really like just have a buddy and like have goals together. Like do you guys have a gym on campus? Yeah. Do you guys have women in only times right now? Some of, okay. Yeah. So anyway, like have a buddy that you have the accountability with that really helps is the systems in place. Mo relying on motivation is like you're, you're setting yourself up for failure because you're not going to be always motivated. Um, the other thing with nutrition is what you have around you is what you're going to eat. Right. So um, I have one younger client and she has, she had a chocolate stash in her room and I'm like, okay, that you need to stop refilling that chocolate stash. Right. Um, so just not having those things around you and you're, you're less likely yeah, to eat. Like Someone brings something home, I'm yeah. eating it. Yeah, so we don't... <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm like, why is it here? I'm going to eat it. So I we work don't... Out enough. I, I, like, that's literally my thought. Is like, I'm like, how much I work out? How much cardio I do? I, I burn this. I can eat yeah. this. Right? But yeah, if it's not at home, I'm not going to go back out and like, all right, get something, come back. I'm like, all right. It's not at home. I'm not going to be eating it. Right? So that's... Sorry, the sister up there. Had oh, yeah. Then... Yeah, that's a really good question. The question was like, do, basically, do you need to have protein powder if you're working out or should you go with food sources? So always food first, always food first, right? The protein you get from food, um, that's unmatched. Don't start being like, oh, I need protein powder. Use protein powder, it's a supplement. So if there are times where you're unable to eat, right? So say maybe you have a full day of classes and stuff. And if you make, say, a protein shake, like a smoothie, um, that would be a good supplement. But don't replace your meals. You don't need protein powder in order to see results. I do not eat enough. I don't eat protein powder at all. I don't like the taste. I don't. So I get enough of my sources. But I think with him, it's hard for him to get enough protein. So then he does have protein powder. Especially if he's um, on like running around. Yeah. I, I'll just keep a shaker with tons of protein powder because I just put the water in it. It'll at least bridge the gap so I can then have a meal. Yeah. On. But you don't need it. Like that's not like the first step. Like, okay, I'm going to start working out. I need to go get a tub of protein powder. That is not the first step. You need to start with food first. Um, and then you can use uh, protein powder as a supplement. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you can go ahead. Go. Uh, so the question was like for supplements for micronutrients. Uh, honestly, for you guys, generally, if you guys are pretty, feeling pretty good, you guys will be most likely at this age. Okay. But I would say, I think you walked in a little late. Vitamin D is one thing across the board everyone should be taking. Um, but yeah, I would once again, go food first. If you do want, start with blood work. Yeah, don't worry about something. Yeah, you really- I, it's just, not, not that they're bad. No. Right, like you guys, like I mean, like two years over 25. I already said my age, so I'm like, <laughs> then they shouldn't worry about it. Yeah. All right, um, I never understand why people get worried. Like, I don't care that I'm 35, I'm like, I don't, not average 35. I'm like, I'll race anybody. Well, I'll compete with anybody. Anyway. Good. Um, I'm going to do that 45 too, 55. Uh, but yeah, um, the one thing is, yeah, you know, you guys are good. You're recover. You're going to no. recover faster. You'll, like me and you did the exact same workout. You'll recover faster than that. Right. Um, you, it's just great. Right? It's, it's with age. Right. Um, like I'm going to get stronger the faster than you go. Which is, again, but you're going to be faster. You're going to be more mobile. Right. So yeah, you guys are good right now. So the, a lot of stuff you guys see on social media, don't worry much about it. Right. Just, Nutrition and fitness, focus on the basics, fundamental. Do it for a year. At the very least, do a year before you add any. Be consistent for a year. Consistent, consistent, right? If you had a week, maybe two off, that's okay. But consistent for a thing. And then, yeah. And then uh, then later on, be like, all right, let's see if I can 
enhances naturally in that sense, right? So vitamins, even stuff like creatine, et cetera, right? Be consistent first. All right, right. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so it's almost market, it's, yeah, it's it almost market, it is market time. Okay, last question. So, so the question, the question was, um, like pre-workout meals and post-workout meals, what should you eat? There's no timing when it comes to post-workout meal. Like, you know, you have that, like, oh, you're going to lose all your gains if you don't, if you don't have protein and right away. No, that's not true. Your protein for the day and the day after and the day before is what matters, right? Um, so you have to make sure you're meeting your protein intake for throughout for the day. That day and the day after is what matters the most, right? It's very insignificant getting protein in immediately. Like it's almost nothing. Yeah. It's irrelevant. Just making sure you get your protein into a day. That's what matters most. Um, and same thing with carbohydrates. Making sure you get your carbohydrates uh, throughout the day is what matters most. But carbohydrates actually is a little bit different. Uh, before workout, after workout, you notice a different energy. Carbs will help kind of get your energy back to normal. Protein won't make that difference, but having it with it, it's easier to do it together. Uh, beforehand, if you're going to have a snack, you can do an hour. Especially for you guys, you're going to be fine an hour beforehand. Um, but if you're having a meal, two hours beforehand, having something in your system will always be better. It, unless you're working out like super early. First thing, you read Fudger and you're hitting the gym, then make sure at nighttime you have something before you go to sleep. So that way you have something uh, that helps you have energy, right? But if you are working out later in the afternoon, so have something, have something in your system to help you give you energy. Otherwise, your body's just start using it for that. Yeah. So it's a good question. So he's asking, um, is it good for you to have a meal right before bed? Right, which is a very common question. So it won't make you gain weight. So when people say it's going to make you gain weight or too much, no, people are gaining weight because they eat too much at night, right? Um, but it's not healthy. It's not good for your body, right? Because you have food in your system. You're lying down. You're going to sleep. Um, it has an effect on the, your digestion and so forth. Actually, there's actually hadith of the Prophet wouldn't, uh, you know, he sit in a very specific. He wouldn't even lean back and stuff, right? So that's one thing important to remember is that you know, walking and so forth, or just moving and, and helping digestion is important as well. Uh, making sure that you know you're not lying down immediately after is good because it's not good for the digestion system and so forth. So that's important. Yeah, you're probably not eating enough throughout the day. That's why, like, nighttime, that <laughs> hunger is hitting. So just make sure you're eating a little bit more throughout the day. Okay, yeah. I think we are, like, at Maghrib time. We'll wrap up one. <laughs> Any questions like, yes. like that? Um, you can... We have our Instagram. I know, it's from Bilal. Yeah. Uh, I spell Bilal properly, so it's B-E-L-A-L. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah, but yeah, always feel free to reach out. Don't hesitate. Ask us as many questions as possible. Our goal is to try to help. You. So yeah. whenever you have a chance, you know, always, you know, by all means, reach out. Thank you so much for having us. This was great. Yeah. It was, yeah. it, the questions were fantastic. So that's all for